Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to talk about the United States and regional partners and plans and what all that means. And we're going to talk about something that we have discussed a number of times on the channel. However, when we've talked about it before, it's been in a speculative or theoretical framework. We've talked about three components that would have to be there for the U.S. to get what it has been planning. And we're talking about after in Gaza, what they're calling the day after. What does the U.S. need? A multinational force to stand between the two sides. A Palestinian state or a viable pathway to one. And dump trucks full of money for aid, for reconstruction. That's what they need. Out of this, when we've been talking about the, the speculation, the theoretical side, we've seen action as far as them moving towards getting a governing body, as far as the revitalized Palestinian state. We've seen reliable partners talk about reconstruction money. The only thing we haven't seen publicly is that multinational force. We've heard rumors. We've seen little bits and pieces, but nothing that's really confirmed. That has changed. An administration official. We are working with partners on various scenarios for interim governance and security structures in Gaza once the crisis recedes. Quote. They, uh, the indications are that they have been working with regional partners, plural. One of the things about the multinational force, if it was going to have any chance at all, it would need Arab nations. It would need, it would need troops from countries that the Palestinians trust. It would also not need the U.S. The U.S. doesn't need to be there. So you would need troops that the Israelis trust, countries that would be willing to supply those troops. You would need troops that the Palestinians would trust and countries willing to supply those. Regional partners, plural. They have the ones that the Palestinians will trust. The other interesting thing about it is that according to the reporting, it seems as though the, the countries that are willing to supply troops, they will only do it if there is a commitment to a two-state solution. Um, the U.S. commentary says that there will be no boots on the ground, no American boots on the ground. That's just out of the question. That's good. I mean, it seems, coming from the administration, it seems like they don't want to commit troops because they don't want to put troops in harm's way. They shouldn't commit troops because the U.S. doesn't need to be there. That, that's not a good idea for other reasons. Um, they also indicated that they were discussing various, quote, plans. So what we have here is confirmation. Those three components, what we have been talking about for months, that absolutely is the administration's plan. When the, quote, crisis recedes, that's a unique way of saying that, um, that's what the U.S. is going to be pushing for. They're going to be pushing for a Palestinian state. Now, the obvious question, are they going to be successful? I give them 50-50 odds, to be honest. I give them 50-50 odds. A big part of it is going to be whether or not the money, the aid, can get through Congress. As far as whether or not they're going to be able to pursue this, that's going to be a big hang-up. Whether or not Republicans in the House are still as dysfunctional as they are. Um, because this is going to have a big price tag. 
it's going to have a big one. And there are other countries that would certainly contribute. But I, I feel like the U.S. is going to uh, end up shouldering a pretty big chunk of this. So, it is no longer speculation. It is no longer theoretical. That's what the administration is going to try to do. All of the pieces now have been publicly confirmed, just not all at one time. There was the indication that they really haven't talked to the Israelis about this. That could mean a number of things. It could mean that they understand that the Israelis are not going to signal or even remotely entertain the day after and reconstruction until they feel that they have completed their military objectives or however they're going to say it. Um, or it could mean that they are hoping that perhaps new management might be more agreeable. And they would wait until after to pursue this option and talk about it with, hypothetically, a new government. The problem with that is something else we've talked about, OMA moments. When you were talking about cyclical violence, every once in a while, the situation gets so horrible that peace becomes a possibility. Those moments occur, but that window of time, it's pretty short. Um, if they aren't willing to lay out the groundwork prior, maybe one in three chance of it working. Um, but th this seemed significant enough to talk about because now you have all of the components having been discussed. You have administration officials saying, yes, we are actually talking to regional partners about putting in a multinational force. It's all there. That's their plan. We'll uh, wait and see how it plays out. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.